Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from Coronite.com. Today is Friday the 18th of May 2018 and today I want to look at the somewhat thorny question of the infallibility of the Prophet Muhammad uh, and in fact I suppose the infallibility of prophets in general. Um, because, uh, well let's start with what we mean by infallible. The word infallible means somebody who can never make a mistake, they can never be wrong. And uh, Sunni theology, certainly, I'm, I'm, I don't know so much about uh, Shia theology, but Sunni theology certainly is predicated upon the idea of um, not only uh, the infallibility of, um, of prophets and, and of Muhammad, naturally, but all, also of a sort of um, a kind of contagious infallibility, albeit with, with a sort of drop-off rate, i.e. the people that he knew who were closest to him will be you know the the most <clears throat> reliable and 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 thereafter uh, this sort of level of um you know intensity of infallibility or at least uh, you know reliability sort of drops off the further you get you know the further the apple gets from the tree as it were and it's it's a nice idea uh, i i understand it it's it's it, it makes sense as well it it's pretty um but is it true? Uh, and that's really the question that should concern us. Um, and the only way we can know is by looking at the Quran. The Quran is the thing that you see, which is the is the criterion. What happens, you see, and, and I'm not only talking about Islamic history and so on, is that a religion is made uh, about a prophet. R and that religion about a prophet then usurps the religion of the prophet and and this happened in christianity and i'm sure it's happened in other religions too what also happens around them is a system of hagiographies um, springs up this is this is human nature you see um, a hagiography is is it's it's a it's a it's a story usually about a saint uh, in which often miracles or un, uh, un, uncommon occurrences uh, feature very prominently and, and the, the, the fact that they feature prominently is said to be a confirmation of their holiness. Now the, the Middle Ages are replete with these types of this type of literature. Uh, we don't have to go very far uh, to find them. Um, I'm going to give you a modern example this is just happened in the last few years. This is Mother Teresa. <clears throat> now, I haven't got an axe to grind about Mother Teresa. I'm not saying she wasn't. I'm not saying she was a good or, or a bad person. I, I I don't know. I never met her. But I, I, what I'm trying to sort of impart is the humanness of this. So this is from the ncregister.com website, and um, which is a pro-Catholic website, and, and I quote. Within days of Mother Teresa's death, possible miracles were reported around the globe. As with all such claims, the church launched comprehensive and meticulous investigations. I would just remind you that this is the same church, the same Catholic church, whose uh, comprehensive and meticulous investigations allowed such saints to the table as Bacchus, the, uh, the, uh, the, the god of... Um, debauchery they did they did kick him out again but quite recently so it's uh, it's not that they can't be wrong they can be wrong and they've been wrong many many times it's just a question of how many times they've been wrong so you, you know you should read into the comprehensive and meticulous investigations you know a certain level of skepticism <clears throat> as you should with all claims all claims to this sort of um special life lived by these certain people and, and no one's saying that, and I'm not saying that Mother Teresa was um, not a good person. I, again, I don't know. But I am saying that, you know, well, I'm, I, I'm going to say that I don't believe what, what follows. To carry on, the, the importance of these rules was reiterated by the postulator. Quote, some people asked why we needed a process at all, given that it would have been much more surprising if a negative decision had been reached or had been given. But I see the great value of having the process, and we did the whole process. I'm just going to break there. Look at your hadith literature and the claims that are made about the processes that uh, are that underpin their veracity. 
and then and then think about how many uh, how many have been thrown out as false over the years just I'm, I'm trying to draw a parallel between these two processes to continue we did not just do the minimum to say that we had done it we did a well done process which was necessary for a major figure like mother teresa and now we have the material for a much deeper understanding of mother teresa which would not have been the case otherwise end quote to continue in the end two miracles were approved they need the miracles you see because they want to appoint her as a saint in fact they did appoint her as a saint the first took place in west bengal india and involved the healing of an indian woman <clears throat> anyway it gives the details of this particular miracle to continue a board of medical specialists worked with the uh, congregation for the causes of saints to study the alleged miracle after assessing the records and interviewing the medical staff involved, the committee determined that the healing was medically inexplicable. Pope John Paul approved the miracle on the 20th of December 2002, barely five years after Teresa's death. End quote. Now this is in modern times with modern forms of communication, with photographs, internet, um, email, etc., my point is not in any way to impugn Mother Teresa or even the processes of the Catholic Church particularly. My point is just to point out that <clears throat> this, this sort of the, the lauding or the exaltation of one's favourite um, personalities is a human trait. Now Muhammad according to the Qur'an, and this is this is my focus, it's, it's what the Qur'an says, not what the Islamic religion claims or does. The, the Qur'an says that Muhammad was a messenger of God and the seal of the prophets. Now, that's what it says. I would suggest that the way to honour this, you see, is not... <laughs> Alright, let me start another way. It's implicit in a lot of um, communication with with people who are cultural Muslims that if you don't um, subscribe to a, a, the, the personality cult, which, you know, let's just take Mother Teresa for an example, okay, which is clearly going to grow up around this woman who's only been dead a few years, a similar kind of cult uh, based around Muhammad, based in things which does not agree with the Quran that in, in some way you are denigrating him I disagree if we if we if we accept that the, the Quran is what the one thing we know that Muhammad left us what in what way does it in what way does it show respect to a prophet to then follow something else in fact to follow something else which contradicts the thing which he brought and thirdly to, not to do one of the things which that thing which he did bring calls us to do which is to use our own minds so i would suggest that it's we honor the fact that muhammad was a messenger of god and the seal of the prophets by studying with a fully engaged mind that revelation which he received from god and leave the hagiographies to those who wish to deal in such things now some traditionalist Sunnis and some prominent traditionalist Sunnis hold that all prophets were sinless. Okay, now this is demonstrably, I mean, not true. Musa killed a man. But that theology, this theology whereby all prophets were sinless, infallible, is quite convenient because it means that we, all the non-prophets, can set ourselves lower and lower standards. Prophets were men. We're men. That's what we have in common. Now I'm going to read a few verses uh, before I wrap this up, just to illustrate from the Quran that Muhammad at least, well, if you want to make these exaggerated claims for him, you are now arguing with the Quran. That's that's really where we are at this point. So I'm just going to read a couple of verses. The first is at 650. Say thou, I say not to you, I possess the treasuries of God, nor I know the unseen. Now, a quick aside here. If you read the Hadith, Muhammad has almost total knowledge about the future, 
um, what, what what foods do, what this does. He, he, there isn't anything he doesn't seem to know. But this isn't this isn't what is claimed by the Quran. To continue, nor do I say to you, I am an angel. I follow only what I am instructed. And what was he instructed? What was the wahi? What was this instruction or inspiration? It is the Quran. That's that's it. Say thou, are the blind and the seeing equal? Will you then not take thought? That's 650. 7, 108, uh, excuse me, 7, 188 reads, Say thou, I have no power to do myself benefit or harm, save that God should will. And had I knowledge of the unseen, I would have abundance of wealth, and evil would not have touched me. I am only a warner and bearer of glad tidings for people who believe. That's 7, 188. You see, the Muhammad of the of the Hadith literature and the Muhammad of the Quran, they're separate personalities. Um, to ascribe to a prophet or a messenger qualities that the Quran denies him puts you in quite a difficult position. And a position which I would suggest that that you consider soberly and carefully and on your own. It's very easy when we're part of a, a community and everybody's sitting around agreeing about things. Um, any any society works that way and actually any cult works that way. But we stand alone on the Day of Judgment and on the Day of Judgment we do have to give account for what we followed. And you know, if you do follow the, 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 the majority of men, the mass of men, according to the Quran, you will go astray. All I'm suggesting is that this is something that it's worth considering and worth considering um, soberly, calmly and perhaps going for a, a long walk and thinking this through, especially if it's something, if you grew up in this, in a traditionalist you know, Sunni or Shia society. So here's the last section of verses. Did he not find thee fatherless and give shelter? And find thee astray and guide. And find thee in need and make sufficient. Then as for the fatherless, oppress thou not. And as for the one who asks, repel thou not. And as for the grace of thy Lord, recount thou. That's 93, 6 through 11. Now think about this doctrine of sinless prophets. And find thee astray. So Muhammad, Muhammad was astray and then guided, as I think we can relate to. He was a man, you see. But guided by what? By following the, the guidance that he received. Nowhere does it say he was infallible or that the people who were with him were infallible either. And claiming that or pretending to claim that or you know sort of playing along with people who, who claim it and not challenging it, it is not loyalty to the prophet I, I think it's a, or if it is it's a misguided sense of loyalty in my opinion the, if, if if what we respect is the thing which all muslims agree upon which is the quran the quran itself says and find thee astray and guide clearly muhammad um was an exceptional person there's no question about this and he applied his intelligence to the revelation that he received but there were things he did not understand in that revelation uh, for one thing the letters of the muqatta'at alif lam memes and so on and uh, my understanding is that the uh, even the traditionalist muslims don't claim that he did so you know if we can accept that there, is, there were at least some things in the Quran that he wasn't the, you know, the sort of um, the final word on. He he received and he he you know قل, he sa said these words say that. What I'm certain is that he applied his intelligence to the Quran, and uh, that seems to be what we're called to do also. Um, 
this surely is the guidance of God. And it is the guidance of God, not the guidance of a prophet, not the guidance of a man that, that one prays for when you pray Al-Fatiha. We ask God to, to guide us to the straight path. And the Quran tells us very clearly that either God guides or he, he doesn't. And how that works, I have no idea. But that's what we're told in the Quran. So I'm going to leave it with you as, as food for thought. That's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran free using the button in the top right hand corner or buy the hard copy there at 10% less than on Amazon. I also encourage you to sign up for the Coronite Plus newsletter on the site to get occasional micro updates. You can download the audio from my YouTube videos to your mobile device using the links in the drop down below. I recommend meetquoranites.com to connect with other Quran alone believers. Like if you like, Comment if you have something constructive to say and subscribe to get more each week. And use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short, eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds. <laughs>